process. Creating art feels good. Artists can create art for personal enjoyment and relaxation. Because art is about creating something from nothing, artists frequently experiment and try new things. Sometimes they even develop new ideas by accident. Artists are good at observing what they are doing and learning from the process. They also learn from mistakes. Today, we will learn by doing. We will learn about a process called oil pastel resist. We will be using these drawing tools called oil pastels. They look a little bit like crayons, but the color is more intense and the tips are softer, so we will need to be gentle. And we will be using tempera paint. Begin by choosing two oil pastel colors. Then think about the types of lines you would like to draw. There are all kinds of lines. You can draw straight lines in any direction, dotted lines, curvy lines, wavy lines, zigzag lines, and even thick or thin lines. You can also add shapes. Draw your different lines onto your paper as well as shapes. This technique will work best if your lines are thick. That means after you have drawn your shape or your lines, trace back over them with the oil pastel slowly and carefully so that you can get the color a little more intense and the lines a little bit thicker. We'll be adding color to our artwork using temper cakes. We will be sharing the trays and you may use any color combination that you wish. This paint, when you first get it, is dry and will not paint on the paper. You will need to activate your paint by getting it wet with a paintbrush. So, dip your brush in water, then carry that paintbrush to a color of your choice and tickle the top of the paint cake and rub your brush in little circles. You can add more water if you need to, to help activate that paint. You'll know that you're ready to paint the color when you actually see that color right here on the tip of your paintbrush. You may put your colors anywhere on the paper. You can do things like stay inside your shape to paint a color and the oil pastel outline will help keep the paint inside that shape. It resists the water or pushes the water away. That's why this is called an oil pastel resist technique. When I'm ready to switch colors, I can Wash my brush by gently swirling it in the water. I should not tap or bang my brush and certainly no splashing. Then I can wake up another color. Continue painting until all parts of your paper are covered and look the way that you want them to. This is my finished painting using the oil pastel resist process. I am now ready to bring my artwork to the drying rack. Cultural. Culture and identity. Artists show and even teach the viewer about their personal culture or the culture of other people. Culture is a part of someone's identity and can include their race, language, physical appearance, such as clothing and hairstyles, religious beliefs, traditions, community expectations, and even personal likes and dislikes. Today, we'll be adding on to the paper that we created when we were learning about process. Artists learn by doing, and we learned how to do the oil pastel resist process. Over the last few weeks, I took pictures like this of everybody in kindergarten, and I also typed out your responses to six things all about you. 
Today you will receive your picture and your six things, plus your name, already cut up. You are going to arrange and glue them to your artwork to share a little bit about your culture and personal identity. Before you glue down your picture and statements about you, try out positioning them in different places on your paper so that you can glue them down in the place that you like best. Now that I've chosen my final placement of my picture and statements all about me, I'm ready to glue them onto my paper. So twist open your glue cap and then twist up your glue stick just a little bit, not too much or it will break. This is just about right. When you're all done gluing your pieces, twist your glue back down and remember to snap the cap back on. Congratulations, you have created an artwork that shares a little bit about your culture and personal identity, and that includes this paper where we practice the oil pastel resist because it shows some of your favorite colors, lines, and shapes. Here's what I've shared about me through my artwork. I am funny. I like to make art. I love my family. I am strong. My favorite animal is a wiener dog. I am full of ideas. My name is Mrs. Cutterly. You also know that I like the colors purple, turquoise, yellow, green, and orange based on what I've chosen for my oil pastel resist painting. Expression. Artists express and communicate ideas through their artwork. The artwork can express what the artist sees, feels, imagines, or remembers. Some examples include storytelling and making art as a gift to show someone you care. Today, you can create a comic in three parts. These boxes are called panels, and there are three of them. You will organize your story by first, next, and last. Let's take a closer look at my example. First, there was a snowman on a sunny winter day. Next, the snowman started to melt under the heat from the sun. Last, the snowman turns into a puddle. Begin your drawing using a pencil so that you can erase easily. When you are done drawing, you can use a black Sharpie pen to ink your comic. Be gentle with the Sharpie pen because the tip of the marker is very small and we want to make sure that it stays pointy for all artists. If you have time, you can add color to your comic using crayons, markers, or colored pencils. Decorative, also called aesthetic. Art can be beautiful to look at and made for no other reason than to be on display. This kind of art exists for the viewer to appreciate its beauty, and it often brings up feelings of joy, peace, and a sense of wonder. You might even describe a decorative artwork as cool. Today, you will create a miniature decorative artwork like one of these. You will be given a blank piece of paper and then can choose to work with markers, crayons, or colored pencils. We'll be saving the metallic markers just to decorate the frames. For my examples, I have chosen to create a landscape with houses. This one was done with crayon and marker. And in this example, I've used only crayon to create a sunset view. Please note that the frame you are using for your artwork may look a little bit different than the frames shown here in the video. First, draw your idea with a pencil. Next, add color. Third, glue your artwork to a black frame using a glue stick. And lastly, decorate your frame using metallic markers. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, so you can create art about anything that you find beautiful. This might be ideas that you have seen in real life, it might also include ideas from your imagination. 
You might even explore abstract art and create something that uses beautiful lines, shapes, and colors. Functional. Art can be functional. That means it can be used for a purpose, such as a toy, game, tool, or even to solve a problem. It can also be wearable. Today, you will create a necklace for your functional artwork. It's functional because you or someone else can wear it. You will be given a nacho tray like this, but instead of being filled with chips and cheese, it will contain a piece of cord, a large bead, and then four smaller beads that you can use to create your necklace. When you receive your tray of beads, you get what you get and you don't throw a fit. It is okay to ask a neighbor to trade colors if you would like, but it is also okay for that neighbor to say, no, thank you. Spread out your cord so that you can see both ends. You will be adding beads from both sides of your cord. First, locate your largest bead. In this case, my largest bead is this red one. This will form the center of my necklace. I can take my cord and push it through the hole until I see it come out the other side. Then I'm going to slide my bead down to about the middle of my necklace. It's important that I keep the cord on the table. If I pick this up, the bead will slide off the other side of this cord because it is not tied together yet. Next, I'll create a pattern. I would like to add the light tan colored beads to my necklace next. So this bead I will add on this side, sliding the cord carefully through the hole, and then sliding my bead down until it touches this center red piece. Now I'll add my other bead to the other side of the necklace so that the two sides are the same. So again, pick up your cord, slide it through your bead, and then slide your bead down until it touches your necklace. Do your best to keep your necklace on the table again so that your pieces don't fall off and roll away. Now I'm going to add my last two pieces, which are these blue beads, and I'll be returning the nacho tray to the teacher. Slide this bead on, and then add your last bead to the other side of your necklace. When you are ready, an adult will help you tie both ends of your necklace together so that your beads stay attached to this beautiful necklace.